Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next CWO premiere video. And this one is recapping the conference semifinals or the overall quarterfinals. Eight clans went in, now we have four remaining. So those were the matchups, but let's waste no time. Let's get into the results right away, starting with King Jeffrey versus Grumpy Old Men. King Jeffrey coming out on top 86 to 85 in a very high scoring war. Unfortunately for Grumpy Old Man, had they faced off against pretty much any other clan still left in the tournament, they would have uh, most likely won with a few exceptions, but um, they go up against a great clan in King Jeffrey and lose by one star. In terms of 10v10 triples, I mean, we're trying to look for what was the difference maker, what got that extra star. It was the 10v10 triples because King Jeffrey had three of them, Grumpy old, grumpy old Man only had two. In terms of the dip attacks, King Jeffrey seven for seven, perfect on dips. Uh, grumpy Old Men seven for eight. So they used all of their Town Hall 11 attacks for dips and were successful on seven. But each clan got seven dips, um, 11s going down to hit tens, and those both um, account for the same amount of stars. The eighth Town Hall 11 attack for King Jeffrey was trying to three star a Town Hall 11 once all the tens were taken care of because they got all the Town Hall 10s three-starred with one Town Hall 11 attack to spare. So good stuff there. Um, in terms of the 10 v 11, the Town Hall 10s going up to two-star the Town Hall 11s, both clans took quite a few attempts. I think 12 total on each side if I added that up right. So pretty much every base averaged about three attempts on it which is startling, especially with the update coming out soon. It's gonna make 10 v 11 much harder, most people think, um, because Town Hall 10 getting a few troops um, being buffed, but those are mainly three-star troops like Miners, Hogs, Dragons. Um, dragons can do two stars, so I guess Dragons might be something. But for the most part, the Town Hall 10 v 10 game is being buffed, whereas the 10 v 11 game, the Valks, the Bowlers, the Staples like those at 10 v 11, aren't seeing much of a change and as a result um, I think it's gonna be a lot harder even than it already has been with these um, these wars to two star those Town Hall 11s but anyway this is an update video let's get back to it anyway though good job to King Jeffrey 86 stars looking very good very confident going into uh, the overall semifinals or the conference finals into the four clans remaining uh, final four I guess you could call it so grumpy old men goes out but they go out with a good performance of 85 stars so the next war we're going to talk about is J off versus WHF2. A little more low scoring, but nonetheless still a very close war. It comes out 84-83 in the favor of WHF2. J off, remember, coming off an 89 star week in round one of the playoffs, had three Town Hall 11 three stars against other Town Hall 11s. Very impressive, um, set many records that war for the entire season of CWL Premier. However, couldn't quite get the job done this week. Uh, both clans, two 10v10 triples, so not a terrible amount, not like a lot, but still a, a decent performance. T two 10v10 triples is about standard for a good clan, and uh, it's definitely enough to win, but it's not enough to secure a victory, so it comes down to the Town Hall 11s typically when that happens. And if we look at uh, one other statistic here, J off had to use five Town Hall 10 dips going down to three star Town Hall 9s. So their 9s did not perform well. They had to use five Town Hall 10 attacks to go down and dip. Now they made up for it in the Town Hall 10 versus 11 attacks, because obviously with five dips, there's less Town Hall 10 attacks to spare, but they made up for it in part by only having to use nine attacks to uh, two star the Town Hall 11s on WHF2. So nine attacks over four bases is pretty good. And that's how they made up in part for those dips they had to use. Whereas WHF2 actually had to use 12 attacks um, on the Town Hall 11s to try to get them two starred. And one base soaked up seven hits and was left one starred. Pretty incredible. One Town Hall 11 base taking seven hits. Uh, good job to the whoever the member was in J-Off, I forget the name, who had that base. Um, but their base took seven hits and was not two starred when everything was said and done. The difference now, because um, you can see J off, you know, looking like they had a pretty solid performance um, besides the Town Hall 9s, but the difference here is going to be the dip attacks in terms of the Town Hall 11 dips. J off was only 5 for 7, 
whereas WHF2 was a perfect 7 for 7 on dips. So you can see things were a little bit crazy across the board, but one of the statistics that seems to never lie is going to be the percentage of 3 stars on those Town Hall 11 dips. And Jay off um, only 5 for 7, whereas WHF2 is a perfect 7 for 7, gets them the victory. Um, so good job to WHF2. They've really been fighting hard the last... Um, pretty much the whole season, every victory, uh, clawing for it and doing a great job. One of, my, one of my favorite clans in this tournament, I think they're kind of an underdog, but they have potential here in the next uh, week and possibly the finals if they make it. So Jay Off goes out here, one of the most explosive clans we've seen in C CWL Premier uh, to a more consistent clan, WHF2, 84-83. to 83. All right, moving right along here, FYSB versus We Are Spartans. This one not quite as close. FYSB right up there with King Jeffrey at 86 stars. We Are Spartans scoring uh, 83. Now the difference in this one is going to be pretty apparent. Um, both clans pretty similar in their dips. They were seven for eight in Town Hall 11 dips. So three of the tens on each side were three starred by Town Hall 11s. In terms of the Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 11 game, FYSB was better, only took 7 attacks for them, whereas it took 12 attacks for We Are Spartans to get those Town Hall 11s taken care of. But the real difference is going to be the um, 3 stars, and that's the 10v10 3 stars. Of course, FYSB has quite a few more attacks to work with because it took them uh, quite a few less attacks to get those Town Hall 11s 2 starred. That frees up more attacks to do 10v10 attempts. And it definitely showed they had three Town Hall 10 uh, three stars by their Town Hall 10s, whereas We Are Spartans did not have a single 10v10 triple uh, from the war. And that was probably the most telling statistic because those three 10v10 triples can basically be equated to the three stars the FYSB won by 86-83. So FYSB, um, the one seed from the Gold Conference, showing that they are a strong force to be dealt with. Now, against One Hive Genesis, uh, the war I was in last week in the first round of the playoffs, FYSB didn't look that good. It was 80-80 tied. Now, that is a little bit misleading because each clan had to leave one base uh, for balancing purposes, not attacked. One Town Hall 10 base was left. So, not quite an 80-80 war, but still, regardless of that one base, 80 stars is um, not terribly high even with that one handicap. So FYSB kind of bounced back this week, had a good war. Um, they probably got two of the easier clans, if I have to be honest, uh, with one being One Hive Genesis, the other being We Are Spartans. Uh, but they're going to have a tough uh, matchup, as every clan will. I mean, these final four are all very good clans. So we'll see how they do next week. But We Are Spartans is out 86-83, um, the final score in this one. Okay, last war. There's only four this week because there's only eight clans left, um, at least going into the week. Now there's four clans, so um, quite a few less wars to talk about for me on my end. This last one, Marshall's Nation versus Dark Looters X. A lot of history um, between these two clans. Not a lot, but I guess enough to make it an interesting war for sure. Marshall's Nation and Dark Leaders X both were, I believe, 4-0 and going into week 5 of the regular season. Dark Leaders X had won by huge margins. Marshall's Nation had won um, each war by a pretty close margin, not being too high scoring. I think the polls were insane, like 97% um, going with Dark Leaders X to get the victory, at least the poll I took um, on my channel. And... It was a surprise in week five when Marshall's Nation got like a six star victory. Like I think it was like 85 to 79, some kind of crazy high victory over Dark Looters X, um, which definitely ended the Dark Looters X domination, although they did bounce back to a certain extent and were able to finish with a pretty decent, uh, or at least more than decent, a, a good, a solid um, regular season record, comfortably going into the playoffs. And Marshall's Nation, of course, from there, also um, did good, did very well, and despite not being undefeated, they were 9-2. and two. They ended with a 2.5 star differential uh, average per week, meaning they averaged each win by 2.5 stars, which is pretty incredible. Um, and that includes their losses too, so each win was probably more than 2 stars, or probably close to 3 star average per win. Anyway though, they got the victory once again over Dark Looters X. 
um, I guess they have DOX's number. <laughs> They're really um, showing their power now as we get close to the finals. 85, 81, it's not always the stars that surprise you, although 85 stars is very solid with Marshall's Nation. It's the differential, the amount of stars they win by. Once again, a four star victory. That's the highest margin this week, 85 to 81. And here's where that four, those four stars come from. Five Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 triples. Five of them. Incredible. I don't think, I don't have the statistics on me, but just kind of eye eyeballing it, I don't think we've ever had a clan get five Town Hall 10 triples in one war until now. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think I've seen anything like that. Dark Looters X only one 10 v 10 triple, so that four uh, difference could account for the four stars. If we look at the other statistics, uh, Marshall's Nation actually four for six on Town Hall 11 dip attacks on the tens, so not too great on the dips. DOX was actually five for six, so um, one better there. But once again, uh, Marshall's Nation uh, winning the next statistic, which is 10 v 11 attempts, only took five attacks, I believe, to get the Town Hall 11s two starred. So they were very good on 10 v 10 and very good on 10 v 11. Um, both of those great statistics. Their Town Hall 10s are really performing and their Town Hall 11s did a solid job. Four for six on dips. Dark Looters X was a little bit closer to the other clans in terms of taking 10 attacks on those Town Hall 11s, 10 Town Hall 10 v 11 hits, and one base was left one starred even with those 10 attacks uh, being used. So great performance by Marshall's Nation to get the victory there. I think they might be one of the strongest clans remaining if we just look at the pure statistics, how they've been doing throughout the season, I think they're probably going to be the favorite. Um, and that's one of the first times they've been a favorite because they've always seemed to have not quite been as much of a, as seen as quite as powerful as they are because their average star is four is not going to be terribly high. I think they average, let's see, 83.4 stars four um, on the season. So that's very good, but that's not what you would think a top like one seed clan would have. Um, but it really is the average stars um, won by that differential, the margin, I guess the margin's a better term. Um, they're averaging two and a half stars uh, margin on the season and then continuing that high margin throughout the playoffs. So yeah, that'll do it uh, for these um, recaps of these four wars. Once again, Marcus Nation 85-81 over Dark Looters X. So, let's take a quick look at the last four clans in this tournament. So first we will have FYSB versus King Jeffrey. Both clans, as you guys heard, uh, got 86 stars this week. Both very solid clans. Um, I think they also both had three 10v10 triples. So. They're good on dips. I mean, King Jeffrey did not have a single dip fail from this week. FYSB only had one. So their 11s are solid. Their 10s are solid. And I think it's going to be a great, it's going to be a shootout for sure. I think it's going to be an, like an 85, 86 um, star war for both clans probably. I'm not expecting any blowout on either side. It's going to be a shootout, not a blowout. And I think it's going to be a very close war between these two clans. I have to go with FYSB. They are uh, the one seed, and I think even more important than that, they're on a huge winning streak, and I think they're gonna continue that winning streak all the way into the finals. So uh, I'm gonna go with FYSB, but I think it's gonna be a great, high-scoring, close war. Then the other war is going to be Marshall's Nation versus WHF2. This is probably gonna be my favorite war of the of the season, really. Um, Marshall's Nation, I've said it all already in this video and in a ton of different videos, but like I said, they're so good. I think their bases are very good because clans do not do well against them. Yet WHF2 is notorious in a way for always coming out on top just by a star or two, just topping what the other clan can do. So I think they're both very good clans. One is a, uh, the one seed, Marshall's Nation. WHF2 is the three seed from their conference. And I think it's going to be a close matchup. It's not going to be high scoring. I think it's going to be in the 83s, um, maybe the 84s, but I think it's going to be a very interesting war because we have two clans that don't um, have the conventional, you know, super high scoring uh, type performances, at least um, for the most part, but uh, at the same time, they're very uh, good, consistent winning clans. So 
two matchups are going to be very different, but I think at the same time, both interesting in their own way. And then we'll see who goes to the playoffs. But um, I think it'll be one of each type of clan. One of the uh, more defensive, um, solid, consistent clans, Marshalls Nation, WHF2, that tend to have good margins. At least Marshalls Nation does. WHF2 tends to be a little bit closer in their wars. But nonetheless, they tend to uh, be very solid, consistent clans, whereas FYSB and King Jeffrey, not to say they aren't consistent, they just have a different style, at least their numbers do, in terms of scoring higher, but um, we've seen them have some bad wars as well, so maybe a little bit less consistency. So it's interesting how both types of clans are matching up with themselves, and then we'll see who goes to the finals, and we'll talk about that in another video. So. That'll do it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked all the numbers from this, a lot of numbers in this uh, video, but those are all the statistics, and I'm excited for these next two matchups coming out next week, and then the finals the week after. So that will do it. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectron out.